OK, guys. Hello, and welcome, everyone, to my talk about SAP HANA as a service. Uh, my name is Kim Thomas Rehmann. I'm a senior developer in SAP's Linux lab, where I'm working with our Linux partners. And Susa is one of them. And we're proud and happy to work with you guys. And uh, so I'm presenting, as I said, HANA as a service based on the SUSE container technology. Unfortunately, I cannot tell a lot about how and specifically in with which technology we are working there, but I can tell you a lot about the service and how customers can use it. The usual disclaimer, I don't need to read everything here. <laughs> it's just all the information given is uh, Just, just informative and non-binding and such stuff. So that's the agenda for today. Um, first, I will talk about SAP HANA in general, the data management platform and the Express Edition. Uh, I will present the sub-cloud platform, sub-HANA service. That's the official name of our database as a service offering. Um, I'll give a little uh, hands-on about purchasing and provisioning the Subhana service. And using Subhana service, I will not demonstrate everything because the time is just too short, but I will go over the main steps that customers have to take there. And I will come to the integration options and other products that we have related to the HANA as a service. Um, but first of all, we're approaching lunchtime, and in Germany, it's actually the time when we are leaving the office already. <laughs> I'm jet lagged, so I would like to activate all of us a little bit with a survey. And please raise your hands if somehow you are related to running HANA. You're using HANA, you're selling HANA, you're integrating with HANA. Who is related to that? Looks good. Almost everyone. Um, who is related to running enterprise software in the cloud? That includes HANA, but also well, any kind of other business software. Well, that's quite a few. Um, who has run HANA in the cloud already in any kind of deployment, either as a service or like uh, with a traditional installation in the cloud? on AWS, GCP, Azure. <laughs> OK. And how about containers? Now, this is just for my information, because I'm working with containers in the SAP Linux lab. Who's running containers or interested in containers? Almost everyone. Anyone who hasn't raised their hand yet, who's probably neither related to HANA nor to business software nor to containers, well, that person would probably not be in the audience anyways. OK, let's get started. Um, first, a short overview about SAP HANA in general, which is SAP's uh, data platform, data management suite, and also the Express Edition that we have, especially targeted at developers. HANA is an all-in-one, in-memory first data platform. So what does it mean? All in one means we have lots of uh, parts in the database to serve all needs which you could have on a database. In memory first, that means that the data is considered primary in the memory, in the RAM. Mm, but just first, because obviously for uh, persistency reasons, it's also stored to some kind of disk or permanent storage. So HANA um, went to market um, seven years ago. So for the database, it's quite new. But on the other hand, seven years gives it already quite a history of development. And now we're in HANA uh, version 2. Support package stack 03 is the current one, released one year ago. And well, it gives us real-time analytics with live transactions. Seven years ago, that was a, really a big 
new thing in the in the uh, database world to be able to run business analytics and transactional workload on the same database. Nowadays, it's like we have established some standard already there. No need for data duplication, so everything can be done on the same data with a correct representation of the data. Um, it has built in advanced analytics, multi-model processing, a lot of cool stuff to do on a database. In memory first, as I said, everything's first done in the quick random access memory and then uh, persisted to persistent storage. Um, it can connect any kind of data with lots of adapters and abilities to pull in data from any source. And uh, you can develop applications on top of the database that's even kind of integrated into the database. Um, so you don't need to install additional stuff to build an application. Enterprise ready security, reliability, 24 seven high availability, that's today considered a must for a, a database anyways. And it's all available with HANA. So this is a more detailed diagram of all the parts that we have in the HANA platform. So the database management itself, first of all, based on a column storage for OLTP and OLAP, and taking advantage of multi-core imperialization. Seven years ago, that was quite advanced, and it has evolved further. But nowadays, you can almost expect it from a database. Compression techniques, multi-tenancy, multi-tire storage gives a lot of opportunity to access the data and structure the data. Data modeling as well, openness. For us, open at least in terms of the APIs. And administration security, high availability and disaster recovery. That's where we are quite happy to have SUSE contributing, contributing to the high availability solutions. And on top of the database management, we have, as I said, the application development with a built-in web server. You can implement JavaScript right on top of the database. No need to install any other software. You can build the shiny Fiori UIs and use graphic modelers to build your data models and, of course, application lifecycle management. For data processing, so it's not just the traditional, well, traditional um, <clears throat> table format, but you can store data in terms of spatial data. You can store graph data. You can do predictive analysis, time series data. You can use data streaming to get data in and out of HANA. Text analytics is already quite major in HANA. And there's the option to have business functions in the data like everything that you need to do your business, you can do in HANA itself. So almost everything's there already for running business applications. About data integration and quality, well, a lot of uh, ways to get data in HANA and also, of course, out of HANA. So the main points, we have one data platform SAP HANA, which integrates OLT and OLAP, already for a long time and known and established, and one copy of the data, no need for duplication. And HANA is embedded in a kind of uh, data management suite that entails all the data processing facilities that we have around. As I said, it's a development platform to allow advanced analytics in the database. There's uh, opportunities for anonymization of data, building pipelines to uh, get the data in and out in a protected way. 
modeling opportunities and uh, analytics framework. For the future, that's just an outlook or an idea. And as I say here, the information is just tentative for you guys. Please, you cannot name me down what I'm saying about uh, our ideas to have a unified UI and a common metadata catalog and a offering HANA as a seamless cloud or as part of the SAP cloud service in a seamless way. And of course, today we have to mention about AI, so we can apply AI to automate data processing. <laughs> That's just a must to mention nowadays. So that was about HANA, and we can run HANA in several ways. The first, traditional on-premise, nowadays as well in a hybrid and in a multi-cloud environment. So let me show you a bit what it means, going from the left to the right. First of all, HANA can be installed as a single server or scale-out, a scale-up solution with Mm, two CPU or up to eight CPU, eight terabyte, or in special configuration up to 20 terabyte. And maybe this data is even outdated already. It's from last year. And maybe the colleagues have already uh, certified bigger solutions as well. And well, scale up of course has support for higher availability, disaster recovery. That's just speaking of one machine, which can be a quite big machine already. Um, you can also install HANA as a scale-out cluster, where you have up to, well, n servers per cluster. And the largest certified configuration is 112 servers. And the largest tested is more than 250 servers in one HANA scale-out cluster. And again, this gives, of course, lots of opportunity for high availability and disaster recovery. Now, that was like the on-premise installation. HANA can also be installed in the cloud, where uh, our partners, AWS, GCP, Microsoft Azure, have uh, in, uh, allowed to, to install sub-HANA instances they have certified solutions for that. And we also have the sub HANA Enterprise Cloud, where we are hosting HANA ourselves. And this gives you the opportunity to install HANA on an IaaS. <clears throat> and you can, of course, integrate with uh, your on-premise or other cloud solutions. So what I really want to talk about today is the Sapana as a service. That's our offering where HANA is running in the cloud, operated by SAP, and just ex the customer is accessing the database with a database API such as SQL. So you will see in a minute that the customer can just create an instance and doesn't need to do any kind of maintenance, but just then access the database and everything is managed by SAP. Fully managed, instant provisioning, you can just hit a button and after a few seconds the database is there. Elastic scale and consumption-based pricing. I will go into detail now. But, okay, first of all, let me come back to the HANA Express edition. Mm, maybe you haven't heard about it. Who has heard about HANA Express Edition? Okay, just a few. So it's good, I can mention it. It's our offering for developers where you can download or refer to a database in a container, in a Docker container. And using that container gives you the opportunity to have a HANA you just need to register you uh, for, for like uh, development purpose and uh, testing purpose. You don't need to pay anything for it. You can download it to your machine and start it. There's also options to start it as a VM 
when you download the VM image, or you, as I said, you can download the Docker image. And it gives you a free way to try out and get a feeling of HANA. And you can just access it, this link, sub.com, subhana express. So that's a kind of step towards the sub cloud platform, subhana service, at the official name of our database offering in the cloud. Um, it's promising openness and flexibility. And one of our chief architects, Stefan Beuerle, said in a blog post, which I'm referring here, with cloud openness comes choice, with choice comes complexity. Today and in the future, across many areas of our life, openness is the key to flexibility. And I hope that I can demonstrate here the openness and flexibility of the HANA cloud service. You see, as I said, it's fully managed by SAP. And you have the instant provisioning where you just hit a button and you get the database up and running. No need to care about the hardware, no need even to care about the uh, cloud. You just choose which cloud, which data center in the cloud you want to run it on. And I think it may have different pricing, but it just depends on what what you want to do or where, where you want to integrate, and then you can use it right away. Elastic scale is already built in, and the consumption-based pricing. So, <clears throat> well, you can develop your applications anywhere, and like develop them on the one cloud instance, and you can store them in a code repository such as Git and move them to another instance without further uh, need, need to do. Um, I'm mentioning here it's built on AWS cloud services as well as on uh, Google Cloud Platform and Microsoft Azure. Of course, you can do live transactions there, you can do the advanced analytics, and a lot of stuff that you can do in the on-premise installations as well. There are just some functionality which, well, needs advanced configuration or just doesn't make sense in the cloud. But most of the things that you can do in an on-premise HANA installation, you can do in the cloud service. So, what do customers use the HANA service for? There are three areas which we have identified. One is the uh, application extensions, where you have an application already. For example, take a HANA or an, an sub uh, S4 data uh, su uh, business suite running and you want to extend it, so then you can uh, access the data from the business suite and do any like advanced analytics or any uh, extended functionality in the cloud service. Um, you can make use of unstructured data, as I said, or special structures such as graph data or hierarchical data. We target towards supporting agile applications. So while the S4 suite is quite major and well, allows you customization, but with a rather like long-term long horizon, uh, with the uh, Subhana service, you can be a lot of more agile. You can develop and instantly test it you can build uh, Leonardo applications, uh, nice UIs, extend your data marts, and as, you, as I said, you can use development tools you're comfortable with. You can use Eclipse, you can use uh, Git, and such stuff to integrate and to get a developer experience, which is probably more to what some people know in the open source world. 
And one focus nowadays, an important focus, is the HI data analytics, where it's possible to uh, create data marts and to run analytics on the data marts. Now let's get a little bit of idea how to uh, really get a HANA as a service. As I said, there is just one click and you get it. But before, obviously, you need to think about the sizing of the database and the subscription or usage-based payment for it. Um, so the sizing is based on two factors, on the memory and compute capacity and on the storage capacity. The memory capacity is measured in blocks, HANA capacity units, uh, 16 gigabyte each of sub-HANA memory, and it can scale from minimum two gigabyte, uh, two, sorry, no, this, this is too much, two blocks, which means 32 gigabyte to a maximum of 128 gigabyte, uh, 128 blocks, which means two terabyte. So that's for the memory consumption, and the storage is measured in, paid in gigabytes. And now the customers can think about if they want to have a subscription, which means they can always access and run the data, they just pay a monthly price, or the usage-based uh, pricing. Or the subscription, yeah. Each block is priced with a, with a certain amount, and you can use your quota that you have paid for every month uh, as you like. You can have one database or several databases just up to the maximum quota that you have paid. Or the alternative is the usage-based consumption uh, where we have metering in place and we are metering the memory consumption and the storage that is actually used. There is a restriction for the storage um, that the persistent storage is retained up to 14 days, which is based on uh, legal and contractual uh, definitions. Now, let me start a demo where you will see how the... Hi, I'm Philip from the HANA Academy. In this series of hands-on video tutorials, we're looking at the SAP Cloud Platform HANA Service. In this video, we're going to provision a SAP HANA Service instance using the new next-gen SAP HANA Service. It was released in June 2018. Well, this replaces... Is it? No. Let me see to get it to your screen. I don't have it yet. There you have it. It's the HANA deployment architecture previously available in the Cloud no. Foundry environment. Oh my God. Now this is truly HANA as a service. So the new HANA service is fully managed by SAP, but it also provides instant provisioning, which is what we're about to do, flexible sizing, elastic scaling, uh, and consumption-based pricing. Now, in terms of hosting, at the present time, you can use either AWS or GCP, Google Cloud Platform. Now, if you want to find more information, go to the online help, help.sap.com forward slash CP for Cloud Platform, and go through to the HANA uh, service documentation. Here I'm in the Getting Started Guide, and this is where you'll find details, for example, how you can create a new service okay. instance using the Cloud Cockpit. So if you move over to the Cloud Cockpit, you can see I'm logged into my sub-account. I have a, a customer enterprise account. And what we can see if we scroll down is that we've got quota for different things. Now, what you'll need to have if you want to use the uh, HANA service is to see HANA service, at least one line with HANA service in your quota list. So this is the Cloud Foundry environment. So what we can do is go to our list of spaces. I've got one space here set up. So I'll click on the space. Now what I need to do is to go to services 
and then the service marketplace. And this is where the Saphana service and all the other services that I've got available to me through my quotas are made available. So if I scroll down, we'll find that we've got the SAP HANA service. Notice its technical name is HANA-DB. Um, don't confuse that with HANA that we'll use later when we actually want to create schemas or create HGI containers uh, on top of our HANA service. So it's the SAP HANA service. So let's click that and we'll get some information. We can go to the documentation and we can see we've got two service plans here, standard and enterprise. The standard edition allows you basically core database functionality. The enterprise means that you can use uh, some of the really cool HANA stuff, such as the engines, the graphs, the spatial, the predictive, etc. Uh, so there are two different flavors that you can set up. If we go to instances, we can see what instances we've got. Well, at the moment it's empty, nothing in there. So let's create a new SAP HANA service instance. So you could choose your plan, and I'm going to choose Enterprise for my example. You could use whatever plan is available to you. Then choose Next. Now you need to specify a password. This will be the password for the system user of the tenant database that's going to be created for you. There's actually a system database and a tenant database. The system database is accessed by, by SAP because it's a managed service. The tenant database is something you can control, so you need to put a password in there. Now you also can choose how much memory you want to use if you're using a standard or enterprise uh, service plan. So for that, you can say how many blocks, and you start with four blocks, so 64 gig of RAM. Now, you can also choose to whitelist, effectively, uh, specific IP addresses, so you can control who gets access to this um, uh, HANA instance, because it's going to be available, uh, effectively, across the public internet. So if you want, you can do that. I won't do that just at the moment. You could choose to assign an application, but we haven't actually got an application up and running yet, so we can just ignore that. Hit next. Now the final thing we would do is to specify a name for our instance. You can call it what you like. I'm going to call it HANA and then Enterprise as it's an enterprise version. So let's click Finish and now it will deploy your new HANA instance. Effectively it's going to provision that. So the creation of the service instance has started. Um, what you need to do is you can click OK and then you need to wait until you get a green color here saying that the uh, new instance has been created. That will take a few minutes. So we can see that the last operation now is created, it's green, so our instance is available. Now you can spin up as many or few instances as you want whenever you want using the cockpit, even though it is a fully managed uh, HANA service, so the high availability, the backups are done for you, what you can do is control what HANA instances you have and when you want to create them. So should we, for example, want to remove this one, we can just come and choose the delete option, or we can create more using new instance up to the limit of the instances we can have in our quota. Now, having created this one, we've called HANA Enterprise. Let's go to the dashboard. Now we can click directly on the open dashboard icon, and it will ask us to log in. Um, this you log in using your SCP account credentials. And now we see the dashboard for the HANA service. Something quite important, you can see at the top there is a GUID, an ID for this. That's something we're going to need later when we come to actually set up schemas or HGI containers uh, on top of this HANA system. So we've got an ID for it. We can see where it's hosted. In my case, it's provided by AWS, how much memory we've got. We can also see the endpoints. Because what you get when you set up a HANA service instance, effectively you get your what's like a, your own Docker container with a HANA system where there's a system database and a tenant database. Now the system database, which you can see is accessed here, is managed by the operators of the HANA service. So that's something if you want something changed from a system database, you would make a service request because it's a managed service. However, the tenant database is something that you have direct access to and you can control manage however you want and devote your apps on that. It's basically a clean HANA system that's dedicated just to you. So you can see we've got the connection details for that and that's something we'll need later when we want to connect client tools. Now what we can also do here is go directly into the HANA cockpit so we can actually for example log on as the system user and have a look inside our HANA system. So let's choose the HANA cockpit. It fires up the HANA cockpit for us. Now at this point you will need to authenticate and for this you would use the system 
user and the password that you entered when you actually created the instance. So I've got the HANA cockpit for my uh, new uh, HANA service. Now, one of the first things you'd want to do is to come down here and use the manage roles and manage users options. What you should do, particularly in a production environment, is, is set up individual users to do the specific things you want and then deactivate the system user so that it provides a much more secure environment. So you can do that using the manage users and assigning roles and privileges to different users, then deactivate system. Now, what you can also do here is you can access the database explorer. And in fact, uh, it's known as the SQL console here. So you can choose open SQL console. So we can see we're now connected. We've got our system. We can look at the catalog of different schemas that exist. We're connected as the uh, system user. So we can do some querying or we can do some run any SQL we like as a system user. So for example, I'll do a little query, just select star uh, from, and then there's a public view called M underscore database. And if I run that, it'll give us some information. We can see we're connected to a tenant. Now the tenant name is uh, H00. That will always be the case when you're working with the HANA service. You've got the host ID, that's the, the GUID, the start time, the version. I notice here in the version we're HANA 2.0, and uh, in fact this is a revision 30, which is uh, SPSO3. So we've got the very latest, greatest release of HANA available to us here. So what we've seen in this video is how we can uh, create a new HANA service. We've looked at the service dashboard, and we've also gone into the HANA cockpit where we could actually set up a SQL console and run SQL commands. So we've got the basic access to our HANA instance. In the next videos, we'll see how we can go through the next steps in terms of deploying applications that take advantage of this uh, HANA service instance. You can find more HANA video tutorials on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to be informed as soon as new... Okay, that's all for this demo. Thank you for watching and uh, yeah, so you'll see how to really provision a HANA instance uh, in the database as a service. These are the, the steps we have just seen and as you can see, you can access it from the subcloud platform cockpit. That will be the starting point. Um, now how to use the service that we have just created. Um, I don't want to show this demo again, um, but let's just have a quick look over the steps for deploying an application. First step would be to create the service instance, as we have seen, to go to the web IDE, um, to be able to manage applications. You create a multi-target application there, or you can clone an existing application from GitHub, so the code can be stored in Git, GitHub. You edit some YAML file to specify which HANA instance to access to. There you will specify the endpoint of the HANA service. You build the app, and then you can deploy it to Cloud Foundry. <clears throat> For uh, managing and implementing the application, you can either use the web IDE full stack service, which is in the subcloud platform, or you can use the web IDE for subhana specifically, which you can use and install locally on your machine. That's also included in the Express edition. So you can see that once you have tried out something and got an idea how it works in the Express edition, you can go to the Subhana as a service and port your application to run in there. And there's also the AWS integration. Um, if, you, if you want to integrate with AWS or GCP or Azure, then uh, you again have to take care of getting the endpoint for your instance. Um, you can use any Subhana client for ODBC or JDBC or any drivers or libraries that are available. And then using a DigiCert certificate from the certificate store, if you don't have it, 
you can make the connection to the database. And then you can like use any application to access your database. So one thing that's getting more and more important is the sub analytics cloud. And you can see that it's possible to, uh, using the sub HANA analytics adapter, you can make a live data connection between the HANA as a service and the sub analytics cloud. There's also a tutorial available, which you can see in the slides. There are more options to integrate with HANA as a service. And the smart data integration is available in the HANA service as well. So the one who knows about HANA may have heard about smart data integration or SDI, which allows to pull data from any other data source into HANA. So the data provisioning agent and the DP server, which is already part in the sub HANA service, um, allow you to pull in the data from like uh, Oracle, Microsoft, IBM databases or uh, from any other data source. <clears throat> that one is available in the enterprise edition of the HANA service. So that's the difference between the standard and the enterprise edition. Um, it's also possible to use the SAP landscape transformation or SLT, where you can use the SAP products such as S4 HANA Cloud or S4 HANA, the traditional business suite, the HANA itself in an on-premise installation or third-party databases as well. And with the help of the landscape transformation or application server, you get the data into the sub HANA service. Again, with the WebSocket gateway. And this is uh, SLT or table-based replication. Here again, you can see all the options that are there, which tables you can access. And it replicates either in real time or scheduled with the landscape transformation replication server. And here's the whole picture as we see it with a HANA as a service in the sub cloud platform in the center of the data processing um, based on infrastructure core services, security compliant and management tools that we already have in HANA anyways. Um, the connections with a uh, big data, S4, OLTP workload, BW4, OLAP workload, and third party applications. And with the easy way to build and deploy applications on top of the HANA service in the cloud, you can benefit from all software that you may have in the cloud already. Like there's deep learning frameworks, machine learning, image recognition, uh, serverless computing, uh, communications, streaming, everything that's running in the cloud as a service can be used then with the sub HANA service in the cloud. So here are some items that have recently been added to the sub HANA service. Um, let me jump to the next slide to have it in a more structured way. Now we have high availability options using the HANA system replication. There's an option for transparent failover such that the same endpoint that we have seen there is the important like identifier for the database is re redirected transparently to the secondary. It's possible to scale up and down the database with a HANA cockpit. And with, uh, yeah, you can like, if you notice you have more data and need a bigger HANA, then you can scale it up. And the only thing required in this case is still to restart the database once. And it's possible to use SDA. So um, as an extension of the SDI, you can query and federate remote data sources 
and uh, you can even like update data in the remote data sources. This is currently limited to connections between the Sapana service instances. And using HDI, you can move schemata and import, export, restore from and to HANA services, between HANA services. Let me just give a little insight into what else do we have as SAP in the cloud. Of course, we have the sub cloud platform, that's our uh, cloud uh, offering or our cloud environment. And in there, and also as well available on premise, we have the sub data hub. The sub data hub is covered with uh, talks, presentations here in the SUSECon as well. So I don't want to go into detail with that, but it can obviously be uh, combined with the HANA service. Then it has been mentioned in the keynote this morning, the uh, Gardner, the open source project and the Kubernetes botanist, which allows to create many Kubernetes uh, deployments and well obviously uh, you can run applications in the Gardener in, in uh, Kubernetes if you have any uh, containerized applications and connect them to the Sapana service and one cool thing coming up now uh, I think it's yeah available since about half a year it's the sub cloud platform ABAP environment that's a kind of addition to the S4 uh, cloud uh, service. And the ABAP environment allows you to implement custom applications in ABAP, so ABAP, our traditional uh, SAP programming language, and to run it in the cloud, just in a very similar way to the database as a service. And I have here some pointers where you can find more information. It's like roadmaps and the HANA landing page. I already mentioned before the express trial version, which you can instantly access and download and try out HANA there as a step towards uh, your migration to HANA as a service. If you have any feedback or ideas, there are some places where you can uh, send the feedback to us and help us improve. Okay, that was my talk for today. Uh, I hope you got a first glimpse about the HANA service. I can mention it's uh, implemented in using containers. And maybe in the, in the demo, I'm not sure you noticed it, it had, had also information on this uh, information uh, in, in the HANA cockpit had some information which uh, operating system it was running on. In that case, it was uh, SLES 12 SP2, as far as I remember from the video. Okay, thank you everyone for your attention. I can take your questions now if you have any. How is the life cycle management plan for this HANA service updating? Ah, good question, good point. But it's already taken care of. So nowadays there is actually the option for the customer to trigger updates. So updates are delivered regularly. As far as I know, the regular plan is to have updates, uh, so new database versions every two weeks. Um, but please don't name me down on that. Maybe it's every four weeks or something like that. Anyways, you get the latest and greatest uh, HANA versions out there. So it's a lot earlier than the traditional SP-based, uh, surface spec stack-based uh, HANA versions. It's more up-to-date, you can access new features. And as a customer, you will find a button somewhere to allow you to update your instance. Is this is an offline or? Uh, it 
can be done offline as, or I, I mean, you can schedule the updates. Like you can, oh. yeah. I, I would have to check if it's possible. I, I would be also more interested uh, how the procedure looks like. You uh, get a new container depot, or normally the HANA database also require some upgrade. Well, you, you get a new container because the container basically is immutable. Um, so technically, yeah, the new HANA version is delivered as a new container, or is, is uh, like uh, implemented in a new container. But of course, we have the options like the, the uh, um, replication where you can, it, it would be possible. I'm not sure what, what exactly is implemented there. I have to check. But using, using replication, you could do something like an instant switch over. You would just separate the container. You would just have to reload the data into this memory because uh, you'd have a separate copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But the new version is always compatible with the old data. Yes, and then the case. Well, I think within uh, a version of HANA, we are backwards compatible. So for any newer HANA 2, SP or instance in a version in the cloud, you can assume that it's compatible. Okay. Well, you only change the binaries. Huh? You only change the binaries. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, the, the persistency is not stored in the container, obviously. It's stored somewhere on the high performance uh, storage. And yeah, it's, uh, it's backwards compatible. Then, okay, if not, thank you again for your attention. It was my pleasure to talking to you.